if you get out of the GPT-5 hype, you can still run GPT OSS 20 billion parameter model locally. But a lot of you reached out to me saying that you do not have good compute for you to run a 20 billion parameter model. For example, you could have an 8 GB computer. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can run the 20 billion parameter GPT OSS, which is the open source free model from ChatGPT OpenAI on free Google Colab. This is a Google Colab notebook that was put together by Unsloth team. I'm going to show you how to run it, what kind of things you have to change, and I'm going to link it below the like button so you can just literally click and then get started. So first of all, once you get the Google Colab notebook, you have to just click here runtime, select change runtime, and make sure you've got T4 GPU. So this is the basic GPU that Google Colab offers, and you can just use it for free. That's the first thing. The second thing that you have to do is if you want to make a copy of it, if you want to make some changes in the code and then save it, then you can go to file and then say save a copy in drive. Because when you click the link and then run it, you're literally running the unsloth version and for some reason if they decide to take it down, you won't have access to this notebook. So keep these things in mind and then let's get started. So this is a notebook where first we have to install the dependencies. The dependencies, you don't have to pay a lot of attention, but there are some libraries you have to actually pay attention. One is Torch, where you're installing PyTorch. This is a deep learning framework if you're not familiar. Triton is a library from OpenAI, I guess, and that is required for you to run this particular model. Unsloth Zoo is from Unsloth itself, and then the main Unsloth library, which is to help you with fine tuning and also with inference. Other libraries, are here to help you with kernels and other side sort of thing to help you run this model. Like you're going to download the model from transformers and a bunch of other things. Once you have all these things run, so it's going to take two minutes for you to install. I think this is a clever little trick that Unslat has done. So where they're installing UV first and then installing it through UV instead of PyPy. I'm sorry if you, if, 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 if whatever I'm saying sounds like Chinese to you. So Python has a dif different ways of installing libraries. The most popular one is from PyPy, it is to use pip, but it is extremely slow. Or I should say, UV is the fastest version of pip. So people are using UV and uh, on Google Colab, you can use UV like this. So you don't have to understand completely that. Once we have done that, next from Unsloth, we are going to load fast language model. It is to just access the large language model from transformers and then import torch, which is to specify the data type. Whenever you have the data type, then you can specify torch.dtag. Now there are different models that Unsloth ideally provides. The first model is the 20 billion parameter models, four bit version, BNB four, bits and bytes four bit version. The second one is 120 billion parameter models, Unsloth bits and bytes four bit version. The third one is the 20 billion parameter model, which is an MX FP4 format, which is the native quantization format with which OpenAI gave itself. You're not going to run that version here. And then the 120 billion parameter model with the native quantization of MX FP4. So in this video, I'm going to show you only this particular part, this one, where this is the model we have selected here. So the Unsloth's GPT OSS, the open source model from OpenAI, 20 billion parameter model, with BNB, bits and bytes, four bit quantization. Quantization is a way to compress the large language model in such a way that you don't lose a lot of quality, but ideally it gives you enough room to run on consumer grade hardware without requiring like a high end GPU. That is what you're specifying the model name, which it will download from Hugging Face Model Up. Then you are not specifying any data type. You are specifying that you need like a 4,000 token context window you're loading in four bit quantization and we are not doing any sort of fine tuning and this is not a gated model. So we don't have to give hugging face token. This is going to take a little bit of time because it's going to ideally download somewhere around 10 GB or uh, 13 GB, I should say, uh, files, sharded files locally. Uh, temporarily, I think it's going to download, but make sure you have got enough space on your Google Drive as well. So it's going to take four minutes after it is done, it is going to load the token or load the models. And it is also going to make the chat template available for, for you to chat with the large language model. Once you're done with that, then you can straight away start running the large language model. One thing that you have to understand about OpenAI's GPT OSS model, both the 20 billion parameter model and the 120 billion parameter model, the model has three thinking modes. So this is a reasoning model. 
the difference between reasoning model and non reasoning model is when you ask a question to a non reasoning model, it is going to just give you the answer back. But the reasoning model has internal chain of thought. So it has an internal deliberation. So when you ask a question, it would just oh, try to come up with an answer. Then somebody would say, Hey, wait, but then but wait, and then try to uh, reverse it back, see it back, uh, validate it back, and then come back to you with the answer. So that's something that well, that is what we call as thinking models or reasoning models. So chat GPTs or open AIs, GPT versus models come with three different thinking modes, a low thinking mode, a medium thinking mode, high thinking mode, and the names are quite self explanatory. So first we are going to run a very simple question. So from transformers import extremer just to stream the text out. That means like while the model is predicting, you're going to see the output back. So this is uh, we are going to ask a very simple question. How many SS in strawberries? Now this question, I'm sending it without any system prompt, but if you want a system prompt, then you can ideally add something like this. You can have, um, you can have one more here and then you can just say, uh, instead of user, you can say system and then say, you should answer like in an Aussie accent. You should answer in like a comedic tone. So whatever you want, you can have a, a system prompt there, but we are not using any system prompt because I'm just doing it a demo to show it to you. So that's how you add a system prompt. Then you have got user user would say how many SS in strawberries again, right now we are using it as only question and answer. You're not having a conversation. If you want a conversation, what you have to do is you have to take the response from the agent and then you have to add something like this. You have to have a JSON object like this that says role is assistant and then feed back the response into it and then you know, keep the things rolling. That's how you have context history, not required here, but I'm just giving you the details, how you can make those changes. So a simple user question, how many SS in strawberries? I know this is a boring question. Just wanted to use something simple, but also wanted to give a little bit of twist instead of using a single S, which at this point, I think, or R, which is at this point, I'm pretty sure part of the training data set of all the major uh, large language model providers. So I'm just using double S and then adding it. And uh, we are saying, okay, take the message, add the generation prompt, return back in PyTorch tensor format, return as a dictionary, enable a low reasoning effort. So this is something that OpenAI has given it to us. And uh, we are going to use only output token of 512 because it's a low reasoning effort. You don't need so many tokens for you to fit in that uh, deliberation. This is how the output looks like your chat GPT, a large language model. This is a by default, the system message, the knowledge cutoff with the large language model is June, uh, 2024. And uh, the current date is whatever this date is August, 2025. So the model is one year old, at least in terms of the knowledge it's got. So the reasoning effort is low and you have got like bunch of tags, let's say meta tags, uh, valid channels, analysis, commentary, final channel must be included for every message calls to those tools must go to a commentary channel. So we are not invoking any sort of tool in this demo, but you can do tool um, in a uh, tool calling as well with these large language models, especially the open source 20 billion parameter model. You can do tool calling as well. So if you're do, doing tool calling, it says like, this is what you have to do. Anyways, the user message starts here. How many SS and strawberries? The user message ends there and then you can see the assistant is starting. It's looking at everything and uh, you can see that they've started the analysis. We count a substring SS and word strawberries are uh, the word strawberries and it correctly takes the word that we have given like the very small large language model sometimes even miss the word that we give and then they just clear out the type on that take the word from dictionary. But in this case, the GPT was 20 billion parameter model picked up exactly what we give. The word starts with SS and at the end SS, maybe uh, let's check SS. So it's uh, splitting individual characters. So this is without any tool. Uh, just remember no Python ripple, no word counter, nothing at all. So the position zero to one SS at the start at the end, near end, the last two letters SS. So total two, no other consecutive SS. So the answer is two end and then assistant is finally giving us a message. That was the thinking part. And the assistant is finally giving us the message. The string strawberries begins with the pair SS ends with another pair SS. Now you saw how the entire conversations took place starting to end. Now I'm going to go to the next prompt here. We are going to have a medium reasoning effort 
and to keep things simple i'm going to ask a very stupid dumb question uh, not a dumb question but should be super easy for the model to answer so i'm going to just go ahead and say who is the president of usa ideally the model doesn't have to think even for this question but we're going to see what it is going to do i'm going to send this question and you can see that my ram ha is not even peaked which is honestly like a very good thing given the way we are running a 20 billion parameter model with four bit quantization so i think it's unsluts magic with using uh, you know their own inferencing engine so which is something that you should ideally appreciate so we have started here who is the president of usa the channel analysis has started it says the user is asking who is the president of usa the reasoning if it is medium and as of current date this one the president is joe biden um i mean we know this right um because obviously the data training data is old wait joe biden was president until 2025 actually joe biden served 21 to 25 the next election was 24 the president was elected joe biden but biden was reelected i mean it's it's the discussion the model is having the raw chain of thought that's very interesting to see actually in 2024 i think the presidential election happened the winning candidate might be somebody else so as of 2025 joe biden is no longer president in 2024 the election was contested by multiple parties according to real events as of 2025 the usa had a new president but i must consider that the user might not be referencing to actual world events <laughs> in the prompt but we are not to hallucinate okay i think that must be part of the post training uh, the alignment let's do a quick look as of 2025 88 the president of usa is still joe biden okay i think it's going to come to a conclusion saying that either joe biden is the president or you know it doesn't know anything so it's a fun way to understand how the model deliberates what kind of things the model is doing and uh, i mean honestly like the most exciting part of this gpt versus release the open source release is that open ai is giving you access to the raw chain of thought which is like what we were reading now which uh, until now open ai did not give access to at all so i'm pretty happy to see what open ai has done here so it's it's also fun to see the chain of thought if you want a really high reasoning effort then you can just go here and then call it high so when your question that you are asking requires more intellectual uh, let's say deliberation more thinking then you can probably go here and then ask like for example you can say um sally has uh, three uh, brothers and uh, all the brothers have two sisters each how many sisters um does do does sally have um maybe instead of sally i should say um, priya maybe like an indian name so that the question is not part of the training data it's a very uh, common question that uh, llms mostly get wrong very small llms a 20 billion parameter model shouldn't get wrong but we are going to see we have enabled high reasoning effort here and you can see the model has started already producing the answers the analysis is done we are asked so another interesting thing that you would see with open ai gpt model most models think in first person like i i i if you see um, any quen related models deep seek model even like uh, gemini models it is always i but i don't know for some reason the gpt oss family of models always think v i don't know if it is a deliberate choice to make the model think like it's more than one person i don't know what is the case we are asked priya has three brothers and the, the it's just repeating the question and if all the brothers have two each then the total number of sisters is two but hey uh, the key is that the brothers are the same group it might be something like if each brother has two sisters then there might be then there are two sisters common to all the brothers must check um if we double count let's interpret there are three brothers each brother has two sisters it could be that there are two sisters total that all the brothers share but each brother might have okay my, i think i messed up the question might have two sisters we, which could be the same sisters okay um let's assume the two sisters are common to all the brothers then priya has two sisters but wait see the but wait there was a paper a uh, literature quite a while back but wait 
significantly increases the thinking process. It's like something you can add, but wait, and then it increases the thinking process. But wait, Priya siblings, three, the brothers are three, they have sisters among them, but Priya is presumably sister of those brothers. So how many sisters does Priya have? The likely puzzle number is that Priya, the number of sisters Priya of Priya is two, but uh, yeah, this, that includes possibly the same two sisters. It's thinking too much, uh, to be honest. But if we interpret them, all brothers have two sisters. I think I'm going to get bored and stop this. Each brother has two sisters, meaning there are two sisters that are common among all the brothers. But if Priya is one of those two sisters, wow. Then the answer is, are you kidding me? But maybe the question expects the brothers have each, each two sisters. So the total sisters among them is two. Since Priya is among those sisters, she has at least one sister. But the question is, how many sisters does Priya have? It might count how many sisters she has, not including herself. For instance, if Priya only has one sister, that would count as one sister. Just go on, goes on and on. I'm going to stop it here, but you get the point. You get the point of how to run this prompt. And um, I think the inference speed is pretty decent. You get it as a free GPU. Now you might ask me like, hey, why would I need this, uh, right? Um, I can't run this locally. I'm not going to use it as a chat GPT, chat prompt, or uh, you know, just to have a chat. I mean, who would take the effort to go to Google Colab, wait for so many minutes, and then do it? I think this is extremely helpful if you want to run some sort of batch process. For example, these models are effectively very good uh, for, as a zero shot, let's say NLP task. For example, what do I mean by that? On NLP, uh, basic NLP, we have something called named entity recognition. Okay, named entity recognition. Okay, um, I'm going to take some named entity recognition example. And um, let us say that um, I'm going to take one here. I'm going to take this example and give it here. And I'm going to just keep it low for, for instance. Please, please reply in JSON with all the entities and relevant names you are an NER engine. Okay, so I've just given it as a low, um, I've just given it as a low thinking effort. I have a feeling maybe like the max new tokens might hit a problem because we have got a long thing. But this is where you can effectively use this Google Colab notebook, you can use it for synthetic data generation, you can use it synthetic data generation means if you want to train the model, you want to generate more data, you can do that with this. You can use it like a classical NLP engine. So, and I said, give me test JSON. So this is also very good with structured output. So you can see here, it's uh, adding an uh, adding a JSON here. It's saying, oh, name, Mahua Moitra type person. I didn't even ask for description. It is going to give me the description. If there is an organization, if there is a place, then it would add, let's see if there's a place. Um, I don't think there is a place but there is an organization, Supreme Court, a legal institution. So you can see how effectively you can use this, like you can just keep your desktop open, just run this um, without the browser being closed and uh, in like half an hour or something, I think that's what Google would give you. You can generate good uh, scripts, like you can uh, do good NER classical NLP or you can generate good um, synthetic data. I think that is where this is going to be extremely helpful. And that's the reason I decided to put together a tutorial. Thanks to Onslaught for this Google Colab notebook. I'll link it in the YouTube description. Let me know what you think about this tutorial. If you were struggling to use GPT OSS 20 billion parameter model locally, and if this is going to be of some help. See you in another video. Happy prompting.